Hi everybody. Welcome back. So, yep, I'm actually sitting on camera today and I have a fluffy snowflake next to me, thank goodness. This is kind of a serious video, but it's an announcement of my next diamond painting, which I will be starting today, and I'm not sure you probably won't see this video until a day or two later. Depends on what my head decides it's going to do. It's a very serious topic, you guys. It is. We have, in the last few days as a community, found out that one of our own has really been struggling. And none of us understood what was going on. Because she didn't want us to know at that point. And that's okay. It's okay. You know, we all need our privacy. Especially YouTubers. I wish people understood there's so much of our lives that we hold back from you. Because either A, we don't want to share. B, it's really nobody's concern. Or see, we feel, and this is most often, we feel like we're going to be horribly criticized for whatever that is. We're going to lose subscribers. People are going to get angry and shut the video down a minute or so into it. it happens all the time. But I think that we need to understand that these struggles are not just this creator's struggles. They go on throughout the world and in our community all of the time. But nobody knows because those people aren't creating videos or they're not talking about it. And that is perfectly fine. I get it. If you think I wanted to ever sit down and share the things I'm about to share with you, guess what? Never would I have thought in my lifetime that I would be doing that. But I need my coffee first. Sorry. Had to reach over my chair because my coffee was on the other side of the room. So, earlier this year, a very, very, very sweet friend, and I know you'll watch this, and I know you know who you are, and I'm not going to out you because it's not my place to do so, sent me an amazing little diamond painting. And... It was because it's something that struck home with her and she knew that, you know, I'm pretty forthcoming and outspoken about being supportive of one another. She had no clue how much this diamond painting would strike home with me and strike very close to old memories with me. But it did. And my sweet friend, thank you so much. Now, up until 20 minutes ago, I had no idea when Suicide Prevention Week was. Turns out I missed it by three days. That's okay. This entire month, the month of September, covers two things. And both of them are incredibly relevant right now. <clears throat> National Alcohol and Drug Addiction Recovery Month is September. And National and World Suicide Prevention. Guys, striking home. Next month is going to strike even closer for most of us. Because we will have depression awareness to deal with. And I know that definitely is me. So I'm going to show you this diamond painting. And hope that you guys will stick around and listen to what I have to say. I can wait to show it to you until the very end. But I might as well not. Because if you guys really care about 
what I have to say or my opinions on really serious matters like this, you'll stick around and listen to the next few minutes. And I really hope you do. Because you will learn things about me that you never would know otherwise. Okay? So, I'm probably going to get nailed by YouTube for saying the word suicide. But this is a suicide awareness ribbon dime painting. What makes it so special is that it, the message on it, that should strike home with all of us really hard. It's okay not to be okay. That doesn't just apply to suicide awareness. That applies to depression, anxiety, addiction, and recovery. Guys, our health problems. I suffer with very bad chronic health issues. I live in pain nonstop. That's probably a big contributor to the depression and anxiety. Now, this is the diamond painting I'm starting today. I was going to draw for the rest of the day because I've been filming all morning. Like, non-stop all morning for you guys. <coughs> right in the midst of my son having a massive grand mal after the seizure he had yesterday. So, th when we get those partial complex, they're usually a precursor to something worse coming, and it was. So, I'm watching him very closely. My door is not even closed completely because I need to be able to hear if he goes thud on the floor again. Believe me, that's not a nice sound for a mom to hear. Um, oh, something else about this diamond painting, and I didn't know it until today. The company that I have never done a diamond painting from, that I received huge recommendation from Kelly and Callie about at one point, was Hankins. This is by Hankins. And knowing the person who sent it to me, it's probably a custom. And if it is, sweetheart, please let me know so that, you know, we can then release the order number for people to order this if they would like. Okay, guys. So... This person in our community is having a really rough time right now. And yeah, things that shocked me and shocked probably all of you were stated. We, we learned things that really weren't our business in the first place. Not even from the jump should we have had to know about that. She didn't have to tell us anything. And she never, ever had to be in a position where she came and, and was honest with us, but she made that choice because she couldn't, I think, I don't know, I think that in her heart she didn't want to live with that lie. Rather than condemning her, I think that we need to take a step back and try to show some understanding and kindness. Because you know what? No one is perfect. No one is absolutely stable, perfect life. It doesn't occur, guys. The whole thing about being normal. Well, somebody please define what it is to me because I've spent my whole life wanting to know. I'm 50 years old. I still have no clue. What's normal? Because everybody has secrets. We all have secrets. And I'm about to tell you a couple of mine that relate to this. When I was, and I can't remember exactly, I was either 19 or 20, and I might have just been turned 21 or right. I think it was before my 21st birthday. Oh, gosh. Not something I want to remember and relive, but I think it's important for you guys to know at this moment in time. 
a very close friend of mine who, oh my God, I just, I adored him. He had the most beautiful, beautiful, striking blue eyes. But he wore sunglasses all the time. Drove a gorgeous white Stingray Corvette. He was in the Air Force, stationed at Luke Air Force Base. And we were just friends. Just super good friends. We would flirt. He, no. <laughs> it was nothing like that. I was dating one of his buddies, and he was marrying an idiot. Anyway. So, he was originally from Alaska, and very wealthy dad. Um, I think it surprised everybody who knew him before that he would join the military, but he he was definitely service-oriented and, and very much about giving back to his country. Amazing guy. He was several years older than me. Jet black hair, striking blue eyes. His prescription glasses were tinted because women would freak out over his eyes and he was tired of hearing it. It took me years before he let me see his eyes. And I got a phone call one evening. And uh, his friend that I had dated back in the day, you know, we were just friends at that point. And I haven't heard from him really since this phone call. Was Amber David's dead? What? No. No, 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 no. David was like 24 years old, I think. Right around there. And he tells me, yeah. He committed suicide, and I went, no, he did not. He would not have done that. There's no way. Well, the military ruled his death a suicide, is what it turned out to be. To this day, I want to know how you commit suicide with a gunshot to the back of your head, very back unloaded gun because you tossed it on the bed. Doesn't happen. But it's still ruled a suicide. So that diamond painting struck my heart. I've never forgotten my friend. I never will. About 20 years ago, back this month, in just a few days, it'll be 20 years since my car accident. A few months after the accident, when I was told I would never walk again and I was going to die, in just a few years, because my system was not handling it well, and I had cancer, and it was just, it was a whole mess. <clears throat> I was overwhelmed with depression, and feeling like I was nothing more than a burden to my dad and my kids. And I thought about it, you guys, I've written, I mean, they had me on so much medication at that time, But there were just bottles of pills. And I, I seriously thought about it because I really felt like I had nothing left to contribute to my family. That I was just going to be the thing they'd have to take care of forever. And then my dad told me to get my butt dressed. Go to the Humane Society. 
and get a friend because he couldn't handle seeing me like that anymore. And I tried to object, but you didn't object too much with my dad. Once he set his mind to something, it was, nope, I'm not even listening. Go. Okay. That was the day that I met and adopted my Snowy, my very first American Eskimo. And it was the day that I felt like somebody needed me more than I needed to not be here anymore. Because he was so abused. See, in my mind, being all twisted up and heavily medicated, if I was gone, my dad would take care of the kids and they wouldn't have to worry about me being like that. Over the years, I got away from the doctors that were really heavily over medicating me and in fact they nearly killed me overdosing me with what they were doing and eventually I went off all of my medications and I, I did it carefully and properly and with doctor supervision because I knew I couldn't afford to have a doctor anymore so for two years I was not on anything for my depression or my anxiety or my physical issues. Two years. And you met me during that two years. You met me nine months before I got a doctor and had things go wrong that forced me back onto medication for anxiety and depression. <clears throat> When Snowy and Frosty passed away, I thought about it again. And I looked down at Chrissy and knew I couldn't. I couldn't because I couldn't leave her. Nobody was going to take care of her the right way. Nobody. So over the next three years, I got the rest of the puppies. See, but now I don't. Think about those things because every day up here every single day i wake up and i see things like this little fluffy tail right here <laughs> he wiggling for me and i know that it is way more important to me that they have everything that they need and deserve than for me to escape I don't feel like I need to escape anymore. I'm okay now. But I learned that part of my problem was PTSD. And a lot of crap that went down in my childhood had made for a perfect storm that seriously doctors and psychologists still tell me they're surprised I made it. And now we have one of our own community members that that needs the kind of care and support that my dad gave me, that my puppies give me every day, that my kids are always there for me. You guys, please, just take this month what's left of it. And I think if you look at your life and the people around you, you'll find that addiction, depression, anxiety, and suicide have touched us all somewhere along the way. And please, show the kindness that you would want to be shown else. I know sometimes that's hard. I mean, you guys see me, I'm always level, and I was that level before I ever went back on my meds. But I'm just, I'm a, I'm, that's me, you guys. I'm not exciting. I'm not uppity. 
I'm not squealing and screaming and, and I'm not losing it in front of you. It kills me to show any emotion. And this was a hard, hard video for me to make. But I think it's an important one because I think in some way we've all struggled with these things or we're close to someone who does. And sometimes the most amazing and generous thing you can do is just to not say anything negative. My, I really do pray for you guys, you know, because I, I live these struggles. I live a life where this is all everyday prevalent health issues and things in my memories that I don't want to remember, but they don't go away. That's why I have trouble sleeping is the fibro and the nightmares from what I've lived through. But I'm taking this opportunity and this amazing diamond painting sent to me by my friend to try to raise awareness with everyone in the community, both diamond painting community and art community. And if any of my stickers are here, would you guys do? That we need to be kind and we need to be aware that just because someone is struggling with addiction or emotional or mental issues or illnesses doesn't make them any less of a person or any less important than anybody else. Take a moment and show a little kindness. That's all I'm asking. And I know that most of you will because I have some amazing people on this channel and I'm really grateful for you guys. So with that, I, I'm going to get off here and go have a cigarette and <sighs> calm down. And then I'm going to start this diamond painting. I'm as bad as I'm hurting today, I'm going to start this diamond painting. <clears throat> In my description box, you will find my email address if you need to reach out. Also, I've been putting my PayPal in again because everybody is struggling right now and many of you know that I don't, you know, I don't have the money to go out and buy a bunch of stuff to put on the channel and I wish I did. So if you find it in your heart and in your availability and you want to, you're welcome to donate to the channel and if not, that's okay too. Just being here matters. <laughs> At least it matters a lot to me. Because then I don't feel like I'm wasting my time in talking to just a camera. <laughs> Please leave a positive comment. Give this video a like. Especially if you've ever known anybody. Or you yourself have ever struggled with issues like these. And remember that it really is okay not to be okay. It really is. You guys have a great week. I will talk to you soon.